Today, I'm continuing to answer your questions and concerns when it comes to navigating life during these uncertain times due to the coronavirus. Now, joining me is Dr. Dina Grayson, who is a medical doctor, scientist, and an expert when it comes to deadly pandemic viruses. So, Dr. Grayson, let's talk a little bit about where you think this is likely to go uh, in the coming months. Uh, we're in the first wave of this <clears throat> coronavirus, but this is not likely to be the only wave, correct? Well, unfortunately not, Dr. Phil. I, you know, this coronavirus, if, if it behaves like other coronaviruses, that's a family of viruses, they tend to be seasonal like influenza, where you see a peak of infections during the winter months and then sort of a, a calming down during the summer. So what a lot of experts think, including myself, is that this is just the first wave of infections. And we got a little bit lucky because, I know that sounds weird, but we got a little lucky because this, this coronavirus hit us towards the end of our flu season, which again, peaks during the winter months. So what we expect is that as our summer approaches, and winter approaches in the Southern Hemisphere, that the Southern Hemisphere will become the hot, the new hot zone. And then come our next flu season, which starts in that kind of October timeframe, we expect that this virus will boomerang back here to the North, causing a second, even worse wave of infections. What do you think the death toll can be from this COVID-19 disease with first and second wave as this thing comes around uh, and hits us again in the next winter, next flu season. What do you think the death toll can get up to body count wise? Well, in an absolute worst case scenario, uh, you know, this could be as high as three or four million people. Now, uh, you know, I, I have been calling for nationwide lockdowns uh, for the last several weeks. Because right now, we, of course, as we know, we don't have any vaccines. We have no proven treatments. There's some experimental ones and some you know, treatments that people like to talk about, but nothing that's really been proven to work. And so the, really the only uh, defense we have against this deadly virus right now, for the most part, is to shelter and, and to try to, everyone talks about flattening the curve. And the reason that's important is that you know, if you do get exposed to this virus, you, there's a good ch good shot that you'll get sick. 80% of people, relatively mild infection, and that can be ranging from relatively, you know, no symptoms through to uh, a pretty bad flu, but, you know, you can still stay at home and be okay. But still 15 to 20% need to go into the hospital and about 5% into the intensive care unit. So I know a lot of your viewers in, have been hearing all about these ventilators. That's a breathing machine. And so if we have this sudden surge of patients like was seen in Wuhan, China, like was seen and is continuing to be seen in Italy and in Spain, you just run out of stuff. You don't have enough ventilators. And so if you're a person that's really, really sick and you need a breathing machine to help you breathe and there aren't enough available, then unfortunately, you know, that's, you know, that's a death sentence. So by staying home, by, by sort of this flattening the curve that we keep hearing about, that actually has real benefit to everybody. It helps save lives. 